Don, a show with an accent for those without one. A lot of news these days about, you know, we're talking Ferguson, we're talking about uh, an African that he was sent to 30 years uh, in prison and was ex exonerated uh, last week because of DNN. It was innocent. We're talking about innocent African Americans and death rolls. We're talking about police brutality. We're talking about this video here in Skyway in our own backyard. Here is Skyway in downtown Minneapolis where uh, an African father was arrested by the Minneapolis police. He was waiting for his son at school. He was arrested and you all heard the policeman say, you're not my brother. When the guy say, hey brother, I'm just waiting for my son. So police brutality Especially, and uh, you know, against uh, African American and against minority, become a major issue here in racism and militarization of our police department. All those other issues bring, uh, you know, uh, the issue of racism and, and, and African American uh, status in this country. It's nice to hear a good story uh, about this, and uh, we have a very uh, special guest here. We have Les Lester. Uh, he's a writer and a journalist, and he really wrote uh, a new book called The Awakening of Kofu. Once I hear Kofu, I want this guy on my show. Kofu, as you all know, he's the one built the biggest pyramids. And I have no idea. I haven't read the book. The book is right there. It's on the market. Uh, but uh, I'd be interested to know what, how Kofu and African-American and Afrocentric, as we say, saying, connected. Welcome to Bill uh, Ahdan, Les. Thanks so much. It's interesting to know that the awakening of Kofu uh, has a connection uh, to uh, Africans and African centrings. Uh, I haven't read the book because I just got it. Tell us a little bit about what, what's the premises of your book. Well, I wrote the book as a way of breaching through uh, popular culture the whole Afrocentric uh, beginnings of the Middle East, uh, Egypt, uh, Ur, even where the Hebrews are from, uh, was an area of black people. There was no border. We see the European border and says, this is Africa, this is the Middle East. Well, in the ancient world, people just traveled across the landmass. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is a way to breach that subject through popular culture. I see. So, and you know, can you relate to what was going on at this time? You talk about 4,000 years ago now. Can you, you relate to what was going on now to what's, go I mean, uh, to, to what went on in, in, in those, t in, in, in those uh, time? Why, why certainly? I, I feel uh, the people in Ferguson, Missouri, for example, uh, there is a smoldering resentment uh, against the larger institutional society because these people are the least uh, economically advantaged, etc. And uh, yet, whenever something happens, that is propagated in the media. But King Tut, for example, was, was brought to uh, here in the Twin Cities. And no mention that King Tut was a black man. I didn't know that. Yeah, n n no mention whatsoever during that period. In fact, I pulled you up on the web during that period. I think uh, Zahi Hawass was in town. Oh, oh I know Zahi. <laughs> oh, you know Zahi, OK. Well, oh, I met Zahi Hawass and I interviewed him. And he never mm -hmm. mentioned that, but I, I, I know. So, so, as when you say Khofu was black, mm -hmm. you talk about was he different than Egyptian? Or most of Egyptian were blacks. Well, that's right. Egyptians had corn pepper hair, yeah. um, uh, much like uh, my hair, um, and uh, they were black. They were uh, light skinned. Uh, you know, you can be light skinned uh, black and have uh, 
uh, albino and you're not necessarily, there's no necessarily a, a, a white amalgamation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a, a pigmentation issue, that's a genetic issue. Yes, what yes. I'm talking about Egyptian in the south mm -hmm. are Africans, uh, more that's African than, uh, than Arabs or than uh, Northern. So mm -hmm. uh, the issue of black in Egypt is not really like here, black. It doesn't have that political uh, connotation to it. You know, I have a brother that mm -hmm. he is much darker than me, that mm -hmm. anybody looks he's black. Mm -hmm. So when, 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 uh, when you say the Hebrew were black or, uh, or uh, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to assume they are mm -hmm. the one who built the pyramids, they are mm -hmm. the one who did this. Mm -hmm. So I mean the Hebrew, the, 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 the Jewish, they said, well, the one, um, uh, there is another theory that the one who built the pyramids are also the Hebrew. So everybody claimed the pyramids. So how does Kofu fit in all this? What he looked at, uh, what Kofu, Kofu was uh, the god, was mm -hmm. the pharaoh. The pharaoh, sure. So, and, and, and the pyramids was his grave, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe in afterwards. Mm -hmm. But when you say he's black, that means he, was, he wasn't looked at as different than the rest of the Egyptian. Well, you're, the Arab community, uh, as we know it, there were no Arab then. Right, right, right. They didn't arrive into Egypt until around 640 uh, uh, BC. Yeah, it was Islam uh, and all that. Egypt uh, is a place where the Nile River uh, deposited people from inter Africa and they traveled into, into that area. And so these people called Egypt at that point, and you know this, they called it the Black Lands, but not because of the black soil. No. As European that black historians people. generally have, have said, yeah, it was because of the black people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Egypt, I, I know e Egypt means the land of the Copt. Okay. The Copt okay. means Egypt, Egypt okay. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I'm sure this is even before uh, Christianity arrived. Yes, yes. So see, see, the Hebrews didn't arrive into Egypt until long, long, long after the pyramids were built. Yeah. The pyramids were built maybe uh, ninth, uh, maybe uh, 2500 B.C. The Hebrews didn't arrive there until maybe 1300 B.C. Yeah. You see? So it's a long time. So, so how they, did they, they, couldn't have, they didn't build the pyramid. Okay, that's just a myth. <laughs> well, everybody weren't claiming the pyramids except the Egyptians themselves. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians mm -hmm. uh, was just, uh, you know, we don't care. We're just going to go and visit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, tell us, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it, the Afrocentric things. I mean, yes. it, this is a Western concept, or uh, or, or, uh, or this is self-perpetuating perpetuating issue by the African themselves, because everybody is mm -hmm. an, uh, an eccentric somewhere. Yes, I'm talking with people from uh, Ghana, from uh, Nigeria, uh, from all over Africa, and uh, that whole Afrocentric concept. You may read Wikipedia, and the writers will say, "Well, this is a." United States based concept. It's not. Mm. Uh, th throughout Africa, people see Egypt as being our classical culture. And now additional information is coming forth. And uh, you might, might have some of those, those pictures that I sent you concerning the Assyrians. Yeah. The Assyrians, the Persians, the Babylonians. All these were black people. So, it, well, it, so it, what it, do we say? It, so, uh, so, so, so the whole paradigm we have today is a farce, it's inaccurate. And grassroots people, black people, know this, and that's why you have these uprisings in the inner cities. So ma maybe what we say, what you're saying, that that all people were black first. Yes, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then branches based on geography. That's is right. Is that what it is? C correct. Black people. Because uh, Adam on thing, God, maybe God is black. I mean, he looks white and green, like a tennis player I, <laughs> of Swedish. I, I tell a lot of Southern whites, you're going to be in big trouble if you don't change what you're doing in the Bible, because most of those biblical people are black people, and when you get to heaven, uh, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> you're going to be saying, we must be on the colored side here. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting, because it was an issue also. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was at, uh, you know, at the, a comedy club. Mm -hmm. And and and, and uh, the guy was saying, you know, how did Jesus or God, you know, mm -hmm. has the green eyes and bla oh know, blonde yes. hair, and yes. it looks like a, a Swedish tennis player. Yes. And uh, and he brought what he think Jesus would have looked like, and okay. the audience was just at all. Mm -hmm. And those are the one who go to comedy club. They're not really religious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they mm -hmm. are just average. Sure, but they sure. still, Grass, why this is a hard 
concept to grasp that that uh, Jesus what was born in, uh, in the Middle East, in uh, Palestine, looks like someone from Europe. Mm -hmm. Why this is something is not even cross the mind of uh, a lot of Christians that they still believe that Jesus uh, is white. Mm -hmm. It's just the residual of uh, colonialism. Um, the uh, writer uh, Noam Chomsky uh, wrote a book called Necessary Illusions. And in order to rationalize uh, slavery, it was necessary to create a totally new paradigm of who black people were. Mm -hmm. uh, if you even look at Rome, the Etruscans, and I hope you had the opportunity to look at my uh, blog. Uh, yes. The Etruscan priests uh, were black men. Uh, Rome was a colony of Etruria, okay? So the whole the whole paradigm that we know as the world today is a fallacy that's been set up to rationalize. Uh, and and I, let's, see, let's look at it like this. We've got to realize that the timeline from, from slavery times to Jim Crow brought us to where we are today. And now we're here today with the Afrocentric. We're like, we're, yeah. at the end of my book, do you know what they, these, these guys said? We're back, man. They gave each other a high five. <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. let's talk about this. This is very interesting. We'll, mm -hmm. take a short, we'll take a short break, and then we'll come back with less laughter and the awakening of hope. Mm -hmm. 